Boletus. Mm. Boletus Fortonii has a really cool cap texture. <coughs> one of the edible ones. Caliboletus is one of the bitter Boletus. This one's probably undescribed. And uh, this one stains blue really quickly. A beautiful it's hot, uh, cobalt blue right when you cut it open. Is that an edible one? The blue stain? Um, you know, I'd have to check GenBank. A lot of the blue staining ones with the red pores are poisonous, but then a lot of the blue staining ones with the red pores are edible. What I like to do is check GenBank because um, what you do is you just uh, do a blast and check the DNA sequence of the one that you're interested in. And if you see a bunch of poisonous ones that are closely related, then it's pretty likely to be poisonous. And if you see a bunch of edible ones that are closely related, then you know that you probably are in one of the edible clades. So I think that's an underutilized reference, but it only takes about 10 seconds to check, you know, pull up, stick on some gen bank, and hit blast. It's faster than the mother-in-law. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so I spent like Amanita flavoconia. All the books say Amanita flavoconia is poisonous, but I see it sold in the markets in Mexico. And then when I checked gen bank, all the species that came up around flavoconia were like uh, rubescens and novanupta and a whole bunch of other ones that we know are edible. Oh, so you can correct a lot of the errors in the books um, by using this genetic. <coughs> so, um, yeah, I would I wouldn't try that one just because of the red pores is a little risky. Yeah. But it, um, like the Boletus amygdalinus, that one's edible. And so all those red pored ones that are over in that group are all actually edible, but all the books say they're poisonous only because of the red pores. This bully is really cool though. It's one of the few green ones. It always grows under oak in the cloud forests. And this is a really high elevation one, um, up under the firs. And Pulverogalectus ravenellii has a really nice veil. And we get this in California too, but it's actually a little bit different species. And these bull leaves are really tiny. The cap uh, fully mature was about the size of a dime. So with that veil, was that prior to uh, yeah, so that when I mean, they come up, they have that veil, and then when the spores mature, the veil drops and turns into a ring. Here's a 10 peso piece. So you see, this bull eight was also really tiny. And they have a lot of porcinis down there. I've seen five or six different species of porcinis, probably all of them undescribed. <coughs> Uh, it was about three years ago, I stopped eating them and just started drying them and collecting them all. So now I have a whole bunch of porcini collections. But they can be really common in some places. Do you think if you bring stuff up and it goes past the desert, you'll they'll start to grow here? I think if I put those porcinis under the correct type of pine tree, I could grow them here. But I don't know if our California pine tree would really like those. You might have to bring some pine trees back from Mexico. <laughs> and this lady was selling porcinis. Um, she sold me this one for about two bucks. And then these bags here are full of lacaria and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. So in the porcini group, they uh, have this reticulation along the top of the stem. And that's what we're calling Boletus sensu stricto now. And everything that's not in the Porcini group is just about to be kicked out of Boletus because they're not actually related. Red Boletus blabber niger, super bitter. And has a really cool texture on the stem. And then Red Boletus ornatopes, also super bitter. And then Boletus curtisii is edible, but it stains your hand really bright yellow when you touch it. <coughs> <coughs> and Boletus subvolutipes, this is one where all the books say that it's poisonous just because it has red pores, but it's actually edible. And we do bull identification. We put potassium hydroxide on the stems here, and that helps us figure out what group of bull leaves they're in. This one's stained blue really fast. Um, and then blue goes away after about an hour. This one I ate, and I wish I hadn't, because I'd never saw it again. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, found this in 2007, and uh, we barbecued it. It was so delicious. Mm. And I thought, maybe it was a common Mexican bully. No, it's not a common Mexican bully. <laughs> I went back to the same spot many times and never saw it again. 
Uh, we also have really awesome Amanita diversity in Mexico. And the West Coast, we only have about 20 Amanitas. But on the East Coast,